Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits uh, review. Today we're going to be re reviewing Campo Fieco Rioja Tempranillo, which according to uh, Amazon, because that's where I've got the info off, a bold and fresh 100% Tempranillo wine that showcases the vibrancy of Campo Vieco and its home of Ri Rioja. Gold medal and awarded 90 points at the Critics Challenge International Wine and Spirits Competition 2016 and silver at the Concours Mondial de Bruxelles in 2017. Tasting notes, cherry red colour, suggestive of a vibrant Tempanillo wine. On the nose, rich aromas have a pronounced intensity with an initial scent of ripe red fruit followed by gentle sweet notes of vanilla and spices. On the palate, it is perfumed, soft and fresh, with long, with long finish and notes of fruits, vanilla and cocoa. And uh, yeah, and at five or six quid, it's well worth buying. I mean, for me, the the wine I really prefer is the uh, Campo Vieco Gran Reserva. But that little fella, £16 a bottle, well it was, could be £17 nowadays. So, dark red colour to it, dark red and, you know, basically near black colour. They call it red, but it's, it's like a, it's not a traditional red, it's more like a dark red, black colour to it. Vanilla. Wow. Definitely got the vanilla then. You get the fr red fruits, but the vanilla came through massively then in the aroma. Obviously, I have had this before. I've actually reviewed it before on the channel, but in the channel's early days, we're not want a lot of people watching it. So, it's good to re-review. And it's Christmas, and I've got a load of wines to get through. So, um, it's nice to have something different than beers for a change. And as long as I don't go overboard, I've been, I've been over-indulging the last few nights, and... Uh, I woke up in the morning feeling crap, so I'm not going to overindulge tonight, he says, he says, touch water, but um, yes, a little perler. So this is only a little dinky bottle, I try not to buy too many large bottles simply because of uh, finance, you know, finances, but um, I am starting to get a stockpile now of red wines from the likes of Lidl and Aldi. Because uh, I, I do like their prices for their wines, especially when Lidl do their offers, which I will be getting uh, a couple every every week or two, three or four bottles, and build up a good stockpile again. Because I did have a great stockpile of wines, and it whittled down. But you know, when somebody comes round, they don't really want to be drinking my homebrew. And um, I mean, the homebrew is all right, but if, if someone comes round, you don't want to be getting that. Uh, you know, a bottle that looks like you've, you know, a pop bottle with wine and it, lo it looks cheap, even though it's probably just as dear as the stuff that you're buying. Right. Definitely getting that vanilla. So it's had a minute or two to um, air. Now, I never thought air, letting a, a red get some air to it was was a thing. Until the other day, I had a bottle of uh, Malbec that I got from Little of all places. £2.99 it was, reduced to on their pick of the week deal. And uh, poured out a glass each. On initial pouring it smelled of vinegar and I thought, oh god this is going to be rancid. So, let it air for 20 minutes and in the end it turned out to be rather nice, rather palatable. So, it just goes to show that this airing business it does actually help. It doesn't need to be with all red wines, but certain red wines it certainly does. Especially the more expensive red wines, they do need airing. But this very drinkable straight away, just in case anybody's asking. Now you've got this, the Tempanilla, you've got the Garnacha, and you've got the Grand Reserve. They're the three that you'd see most, certainly in Sainsbury's anyway. Um, but obviously, like all uh, wine companies, they produce a hell of a lot more. Rosés, sparkling wines, whites. Uh, it's just that when I was at Sainsbury's, we only had the three reds. So the Tempranillo, the Reserva, and the Grand Reserva, they were the only three we had. Since I've left, there's about five or six now, so they've expanded the range. I 
do love the taste of it. Um, again, it's got a lovely richness to it. You know you're drinking a quality wine. Sometimes with wines from uh, sell out the I had a wine advent calendar last year from Iceland, and some of those wines were unknown, unbranded, unknown wines. And you drank them, and some of them weren't that great, you know. And uh, with some of the cheaper wines, say from Aldi and Lidl, you know, some of the two pound ninety nine ones, some not the ones on offer at two pound ninety nine, but the standard ones. Some of them can be a bit ropey, and the brand that comes to mind whose wines are definitely ropey, are Free Mills. I mean, I don't know how to slag brands off, but bloody hell, I've tried a lot of their wine, and it's just not good. You know, unless I've had dodgy bottles, I don't know, but they've just not been great. And uh, I had a friend of mine, well, ex-friend nowadays, but uh, uh, going on about, oh, I've got a bo box of free mills. And I, and I said to him, that's the cheapest, nastiest wine you can buy from Sainsbury's. And he's obviously being tight, spending, can, you can buy better than that in a box. And uh, it cussing me down because of it, but uh, I know what, I, you know. I'd rather have two bottles of uh, a decent wine than three bottles of a wine that's not good, you know. So, and especially with supermarkets, there's always something on offer. Um, so even if, you know, you're better off having two, two bottles rather than three. Three bottles of, of seven inferior products. It's just common sense, I think, but hey, I, I could be wrong. And in the end, you can get just as drunk on two bottles as you can on three, um, if you choose the right two bottles. Look at the percentage. Oh, percentage-wise, 13.5 percent. This is a 2018 bottled, and uh, I mean, I do love uh, Spanish wines. Um, I'm hoping to go back there this year if um, finances um, let us. You never know, do you, with finances? You never know what sort of year you're going to have. I mean, at one stage this year, I had, I had a great uh, eight or nine weeks where I was earning silly money, and then it's disappeared and it's gone back to being crap again. So that's life. Ooh. The notes, uh, what I initially said from when I was reading off the internet, the notes of cherry, um, dark fruits, vanilla, vanilla, and vanilla in the aroma, vanilla in the taste, and all in all, a very decent wine. I remember when this went on sale at four quid once in Sainsbury's, people were buying it by the cases, and uh, it lasted two days. We, the whole company ran out of bottles. They just then they had to cancel the um, um, the offer because it just wiped them clean. So whether they had a stockpile of it and wanted to get rid of it, sometimes remember with supermarkets they're there to sell stuff. So they'll be offered products at a silly price, and that's why they're able to put that price down. Um, and and that's why the likes of Fosters and Carling in lagers are always basically on offer because them companies want to keep Fosters and Carling at the top of the, you know, top of the pack. Same goes for wine. It's all standard uh, retail um, workings out. You know, if the company's big enough to sell it cheaper, then, you know, and it's why Shepherd and Neiman Marston's have got a lot of their brands on the shelves at a lot of the supermarkets because they've got the ability to um, sell cheaper to the supermarkets so the supermarkets are making money off them and it's not costing them too much and then obviously companies pay for product placement on shelves I never knew any of this until I worked at Sainsbury's amazing what you find out when you work there so what can I say? Fantastic red wine. Um, obviously dark red in colour. Vanilla on the nose along with uh, ripe fruits. Same on the taste, the vanilla, the ripe fruits, cherries and that. It is a very nice, rich red wine. It's not a, 
it's not um, an oaky wine, you know, like the likes of Barolas and that, but for a quality wine at a cheap price, it's definitely a go to wine. You know, it's not like your Blossom Hills, which are three or four quid, four or five quid a bottle nowadays, sorry. Uh, this is normally in the six to seven pound range, unless it's on offer. Um, but yeah, a bit of quality and a very nice at that. Out of five, then. Hmm. I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of 5. Very nice. Not quite a top 10 wine for me. There are better wines out there. The Grand Reserve is an all day long top 10 wine. In fact, it's probably a top 3 wine. But uh, that's for another review. When I'm feeling flushed and I'm going by a bottle. Right? That was lovely. Yeah, come sit down now. Try not to drink any more tonight and behave. Be a good lad. Thanks for watching, see you soon.